Hello, and welcome back to AIT 1102. This presentation provides an introduction to our sixth and final lesson, Pneumatic System Compression and Control. Uh, this presentation, we're going to describe the difference between hydraulic and pneumatic schematics. We're going to identify different types of compressors, describe pneumatic receivers, describe units used in the pneumatic system ratings, identify components found in a pneumatic system, and identify schematic symbols for pneumatic components. Uh, to review, this is the schematic that we've been using throughout this course to uh, talk about fluid power distribution. Uh, again, this is a hydraulic uh, schematic. And to review, uh, we have a reservoir here uh, shown by this symbol. You can see that this has uh, multiple symbols, but that's all uh, a representative of, of a single uh, hydraulic reservoir. We pull fluid through a filter to our hydraulic pump, which is driven by an electric motor. The pump sends fluid and generates flow and pressure into the hydraulic system. And these dots show that these lines are connected. So the first item we come to, or first component we come to, is a pressure relief valve. And I can identify this as a pressure relief valve because my pilot port is coming off the intake in input side of the valve, which is acting on the uh, internal spool against the springs. So when this system builds enough pressure, uh, the pilot port will shift the spool against the spring and allow fluid to drain, thus maintaining the overall system pressure. And then we go beyond this, now that we've, we've set the system pressure using our relief valve, uh, we have fluid going to uh, two couple of DCVs here. Uh, up here we're going to a block port, so there's no fluid flowing in this current state. And then we follow down here to this port on our uh, three-way, or four-way, three-position DCV. And the this port is blocked because we have a closed center on this DCV. So in this normal state, there's no fluid flowing other than through our relief valve when the pump is running. So uh, we have a, our DCV here is solenoid activated, so if we energize, one, let's say we energize this solenoid and we shift the valve in this direction, which is going to allow my pressure port to go to my A port and my B port draining back to tank. So if I apply pressure and flow to my A port and the flow in this direction, the fluid is going to try to go through this uh, adjustable flow control and it's also going to try to go through this check valve. So the fluid is going to be flowing through here. We come down here to the check valve and the direction the check, this check valve is oriented is going to allow this valve to open so I'll get full flow going into this cylinder and the fluid leaving the, leaving the cylinder is going to come back here and go back to the tank. So this cylinder would retract uh, in this situation the cylinder retract, would retract at full speed given the, my flow control here. If I de-energize this solenoid and energize this solenoid and shift my valve the other way, so now I'm going to connect my P port, my pressure port to my B side, uh, and then my A side will be draining back the tank, which is going to reverse the direction of flow into this circuit. So when the fluid starts flowing this way, I'm going to start filling the cap into the cylinder so the fluid in the rod end has to escape back to tank. But in this time, the fluid is going to try to go through the flow control and it's going to try to go through the check valve. But the flow control will allow fluid to flow and the, in this direction, we're going to seat the check valve and it's going to block all flow through this valve. So all the fluid leaving the cylinder is going to be forced to go through this flow control so we can actually set the speed so it's going to extend slower than it would retract, retracting with, and we determine that it would retract at full speed. And this way it's going to extend at a controlled speed, <coughs> which is typically less than what the full speed would be. And this configuration would be considered a meter out because we're metering the fluid leaving my actuator, or coming out of my actuator, going back to tank. So this meter out setup would control the extend speed, and then once this cylinder extended all the way fully, I've got a cam on the end of my cylinder rod, which is going to operate this cam operator. So when this extends all the way, 
that's going to allow this PCB, my two-way, two-position valve, to shift and allow fluid to flow from this port to this port, which is going to allow spin my motor, allow my motor to run only when this cylinder is fully extended and drain the fluid back to tank. <coughs> so, uh, and that would continue to run. This motor would continue to run as long as the cylinder was extended and operating this cam, this uh, cam valve. And then, if we shifted this back and retracted the cylinder, as soon as this cylinder came off of this cam valve, this would shift back, blocking this port, stopping my motor from running, and allow the cylinder retract fully to uh, at full speed. So this is our hydraulic circuit that we've been working off of for this uh, course. <coughs> now if I tried to design the same circuit and I did it as a pneumatic uh, system, it would look something like this. It's going to look a little different. Uh, we have the same thing. We have a deep a cylinder. It's going to operate a cam valve and turn a motor. But uh, you'll notice that my PCB is a little different. My pressure control is going to be a little different. And uh, my, uh, there's no tank symbol any longer on the pneumatic schematic. So basically what I've got is I've got a hydraulic or a pneumatic pump or compressor here. And I know that this is a pneumatic compressor because it's a circle with an arrow triangle pointing out. But this time the triangle is not colored in. So if I look at my hydraulic symbol, I've got a solid triangle. My pneumatic pump is, is a, just an outline of a triangle. And that tells me that this is a pneumatic uh, compressor. And it's driven by an electric motor. So I'm drawing air in through a filter. I'm compressing it. And send, the first thing I come to is going to be a hydraulic receiver, which is nothing more than a huge uh, or a big tank a holding tank and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So coming out of my receiver I'm going through another filter and this time instead of going to a relief valve uh, I'm going to a pressure reducing valve and I know this is a pressure reducing valve because it's normally open and my pilot port is on the outlet side of this valve acting on the cylinder or acting on the spool against my spring so when my outlet pressure reaches the, reaches the set level, <coughs> this will actually shift the spool out of the flow path <coughs> and stopping flow to maintain the pressure on the outlet side. So again, color dot means that this, these lines are all interconnected here. So if I follow this down, this port's blocked, and this port's blocked, so in its normal state, again, there's no flow. Uh, in the system and nothing's moving. A uh, couple different things I'll notice here. So if I, my DCV, notice I've got five ports here instead of, uh, instead of four, like what we had on our uh, hydraulic circuit. Our hydraulic circuit has four. Our pneumatic has five. And this is a typical arrangement that you'll see on a, on a pneumatic DCV. Uh, this is still considered a four-way valve but it's a five-port four-way valve. And it's solenoid-operated, uh, spring-centered, so it's similar to what we have our, with our hydraulic system. And the difference is uh, when we had our, we had a pressure port and then the hydraulic, we just have one drain port back to tank, which this valve, I've got two exhaust ports and these uh, outline triangles are tell me that this, that air is just exhausted to atmosphere. So it doesn't go back to a holding tank that once we're done using this air, once it's performed its work, we just exhaust it to atmosphere. That's what these uh, clear triangles that uh, just come to come off of a line to a triangle, that tells me that it's going to uh, exhaust to atmosphere. So uh, to look at this circuit, let's go ahead and shift our valve first. So if I energize this solenoid and shift my valve, valve this way, I'm going to apply pressure to my A port and it's going to allow my B port to be exhausted back to atmosphere. So if I put pressure on my A port, I'm going to have pressure here and again 
Uh, the flow will attempt to go through my flow control and the check valve, and in this orientation, the check valve will become will be unseated by the flow in this direction. So again, I'll have full flow into my rod end of my cylinder, and the cap end will be simply exhausted to atmosphere and allow this cylinder to retract. I shift my valve, uh, de-energize this solenoid and energize this solenoid, shift my valve this way. That's going to allow pressure to go to my B port and it's going to allow my A port to be exhausted to atmosphere. So if I pressurize my B port, that's going to pressurize the cap end of my cylinder, allow and forcing the air in my rod end to leave and be exhausted back to atmosphere. But as it's leaving through here, it's going to try to go through my flow control and the check. The check valve will be seated in this direction, so forcing all the flow through my flow control. So again, I'm, I'm controlling the extend speed of the cylinder, even though we're just uh, using air instead of uh, oil. So once this cylinder fully extends, we operate our cam valve, uh, shifts this valve over, open, and allows flow between these two ports to spin my uh, pneumatic motor, which my new, I know this is a pneumatic motor because it's a circle with a triangle pointing in. And again, this cylinder, this, my triangle is not colored in, indicating that this is a pneumatic motor. And uh, I have a different symbol over here. This is showing a uh, muffler to kind of quiet the sound of the noise of the air escaping the motor into the atmosphere. It just, this is simply just to quiet the noise of the air leaving. So you don't get that real loud hiss. So that's just kind of a breakdown of the difference between the two schematics. Um, overall, the operation would be similar. The uh, schematics symbols are uh, a lot very similar to the hydraulic, but with just a few minor differences. Where we, instead of using a relief valve, we use a pressure reducing valve. And my uh, four-way DCV is a five-port, where in the hydraulic it was a four-port. So what we're going to look at for the, uh, the rest of this presentation, we're going to look at how compressed air uh, is generated, uh, directional control in a pneumatic system, flow control, pressure control, and pneumatic actuators that you would find in a pneumatic system. So uh, a compressed air supply comes from an air compressor. And like in hydraulics, we have a couple different types. We have dynamic which is not a positive displacement. Um, it spins much like a fan, like a box fan you'd have in a room. Uh, <coughs> versus a positive displacement that actually has tight tolerances and sealed uh, pumps to generate the uh, pressure and flow. And we have a couple different types of compressors we're going to look at. Uh, reciprocating piston air compressor, multi-stage air compressors, rotary vane and rotary screw air compressors. So uh, the first type is our dynamic air compressor, and you can see that this is just pretty much a open ha or a closed housing with blades inside. And as it spins, it creates a flow into the output of this uh, compressor. And like I said, this is not a positive displacement. It's like a it would be something similar to a box fan that you'd have in a room that you, you know if you block the inlet side of the fan or the outlet side, it would continue to turn and uh, it wouldn't hurt anything. Positive displacement pumps. Um, unlike uh, hydraulics where the fluid is uh, will compress to almost like a solid form where it, if, it, if you stop the flow, the pump would stop because it could not move the fluid. Uh, air compressor, you know, air is more compressible so you have uh, a cushion there so if you hit the maximum pressure, I mean, it would, it would eventually stop, but uh, it's not going to be like a hydraulic pump that if you, as soon as you stop the flow that it creates problems. I mean, you, you have some cushion here with the compressibility of air. So uh, our reciprocating piston, uh, essentially when this uh, is spinning, your uh, prime mover is spinning, it's pulling this piston in and out, and as the piston draws back, you're going to open this intake valve and allow air <coughs> to be drawn in. 
and then when the piston comes back out, this valve will close and this one will open and allow the compressed air to be sent to the receiver. So it's much like an internal combustion engine, except instead of the piston driving the uh, crank, the crank's driving the piston. Uh, Multi-stage air compressors, uh, you'll find these in systems where you want to generate uh, a lot of pressure because the way a multi-stage works is basically uh, multiple pistons <coughs> where I have the first piston here drawing air in, compressing it, and then but the outlet of this first stage doesn't go to receiver, it actually goes to another piston which multiplies the air pressure because it pulls it in at an already compressed state and then it compresses it more and sends it out to the receiver. <coughs> Excuse me. So a multi-stage air compressor used to develop higher uh, pressures. A rotary vane air compressor, much like in your hydraulic, it's the same principle. You know, we uh, have a spinning hub in here with our vanes, and we draw air in, and as it spins around here to our outlet, we're compressing it and sending it out to our receiver. Uh, screw type, kind of like a, a gear pump in uh, hydraulics, but this uses two spinning screws that actually draw air in and compress. It draws air in here, and we compress the air, and it comes out here, and uh, it's just another form of a uh, air compressor. Uh, receivers. So in this setup, we have an air compressor here, and leaving this air compressor, we come over here to a receiver. And like I said, it's re what a receiver is, it's just like a large tank that holds compressed air. So what that does is this allows you uh, cushion by smoothing out the airflow so you don't have the surges. So we pressurize this tank and then coming off this tank we have a regulator. So as the pressure builds and falls in here we can maintain pressure on our outlet side uh, using a receiver because we've got the volume of air there. Uh, another thing that we have, you know, sometimes with air compressors, you have oil inside the air compressor, so sometimes that oil gets sent uh, to the outlet of the compressor. So this uh, allows a place for that oil to settle out to the bottom, and that gives you a little cleaner air uh, coming out of the receiver. Uh, same thing we, when you compress air, you, you're pulling moisture out of the air, and it'll condense into the uh, air compressor, into the tank and inside this tank, the water will settle out and also give you cleaner air. So a lot of times the bottoms of these tanks, they have a uh, drain valve that you can open up. Sometimes they're automatic, but they'll work off of a timer and uh, open periodically to drain out the contaminants that this receiver is uh, uh, capturing. It also provides cooling, because as you compress air, the air you generate heat the air that comes out of this compressor is hot, and this gives it a place for that uh, heat to uh, cool out of the system. System ratings, so in hydraulics, you remember our flow rating was a lot of time was in uh, uh, drawing a blank here, is in gallons per minute, GPM, uh, in uh, pneumatic system, we talk about cubic feet per minute, so that's a unit of, consider, think about a, a space of air, one foot by one foot by one foot is one cubic foot of air, and that's how air is measured in a hydraulic system, in a pneumatic system, is to see, uh, to measure the air volume that way instead of in gallons. And CFM, uh, can be used to talk about system capacity. So, uh, like if you have an air compressor at home, it probably has a maximum CFM rating, and that is the maximum amount of air it can flow uh, in, out of the compressor. And the other rating is consumer requirements. So, if you have an air compressor at home uh, and it flows 90 CFM, and you have an air tool that, pull, that requires 100 CFM, it's not going to run at its full capacity in that type of a arrangement. So you want to make sure that your uh, system capacity exceeds your consumer requirements. And pressure rating, just like in a hydraulic system, where we talk about pressure is in pounds per square inch. 
Uh, so components that you're going to find, your directional control valves, uh, is that they're, they're made a little different, but they perform the same function. They have a lot of the same type of operators that you found in hydraulics. You know, we have this, we have the lever. Uh, this one's pilot operated. Uh, this one's solenoid operated. Uh, we also have check valves. And like I said, they, they perform the same function, but the, just the construction of them are going to be a little bit different for pneumatics versus hydraulics. <coughs> flow control valves. Again, we have fixed and variable. This will be a fixed flow control valve. It's just got some smaller orifices in here to slow the, uh, key the flow. And this is a flow control valve with an adjustment on it that you can actually adjust the uh, uh, flow of air. Pressure control. Uh, we have you know, adjustable regulators, or we have safety valves for, uh, to protect the components and the hydraulic system from an overpressure situation. <coughs> and then your regulator, uh, also, uh, if you go back to hydraulics, I mean, we call these regulators and pneumatics, but essentially what they are is pressure reducing valves. Pneumatic actuators, we have cylinders just like you would in uh, hydraulics. Uh, except once so they're constructed a little different, but they perform the same function perform in your work. Um, one thing you may find in pneumatics is some specialty cylinders, and this is a rotational cylinder, so it rotates. I mean, depending on the design, it, it maybe gives you one full rotation. So when this cylinder extends this way, it's going to rotate the shaft this way, or if it extends the other way, it's going to rotate the shaft the other way. So this would be a rotary cylinder. <coughs> Here we have a rodless cylinder, so basically there's a piston inside this uh, rod here, and that piston is a really strong magnet, and this is, uh, and it actually holds this slide in position, so as the piston moves inside the cylinder, this uh, slide will move back and forth with the piston uh, based on the really strong magnetic uh, pull of the rod. You might find these on a piece of equipment, maybe to open and close a, a door automatically or something like that. Uh, but there's a lot of instances where you just uh, you want this type of movement on a uh, cylinder. Motors, again, uh, just like what's in hydraulics, you have motors in pneumatics. Uh, they're constructed a little different, but they perform the same function. They have an inlet, an outlet, and they can be bi-directional, uh, unidirectional. Uh, a lot of the same uh, characteristics as you would in a hydraulic. Uh, something you have in pneumatics that you don't find in uh, hydraulics would be suction cups. You can use pneumatics to pick up boxes and different things and place them in uh, different applications. Uh, but to generate suction out of a compressed air line, you have vacuum generators. So basically you have a uh, compressed air supply fed in here and as the air flows through here out through this muffler it actually creates a vacuum or draws air into, into this port and that's what creates the uh, suction for a suction cut. And then of course air tools, this is something you might find at home or uh, this is something you might find in an industrial environment. You have air running, uh, work, doing work on equipment and everything but your maintenance people are also using uh, your air tools to perform work. Uh, you have a pneumatic chisel, uh, impact wrench, uh, a grinder, a ratchet, or a blow nozzle. Uh, just different air consumers you might find in a pneumatic system. So our schematic symbols, uh, again we talked about this being a compressor and it's much like a hydraulic pump except the triangle is not colored in. That's just an outline. So this tells me this is a pneumatic compressor versus a hydraulic pump. Uh, receivers, it's just a uh, oval here with a line in and a line out. This uh, shows me that that's just a holding tank or a receiver for a pneumatic system. Uh, check valves, pilot auto brakes check valves, uh, identical to your hydraulic uh, counterpart symbols. Uh, they perform the same function but you, know, you can find them in hydraulics and pneumatics. Your directional control, uh, one difference you have with directional control, uh, you have your A and B ports, you have a pressure port, uh, 
uh, but the only difference is you don't have tank ports now because you don't have a reservoir to send the air back to. It's just exhausted in the atmosphere, so now you have exhaust ports. And you can also have pilot ports. And notice in this valve here, these, these triangles are not colored in, so that tells me that's a pneumatic pilot. So, but, uh, same, pretty much the same nomenclature, uh, except you know, with just a few minor differences. Uh, flow control, again, same thing that you'd see in hydraulics, they're just constructed different, but the symbols are the same. This tells me this is a, a flow control with an integral check. Uh, fixed orifice flow control and variable orifice flow control. Pressure control, uh, a couple things you might see different in a pneumatic system. Uh, here we have a safety valve, and you'll see that the safety valve is not adjustable. With no uh, air, angled arrow showing that this is adjustable. And essentially all this is, is a, it's like a pop-off valve that if something goes wrong in your system and you want to keep from uh, overworking your compressor. So you uh, have this valve here that if you hit a certain pressure, and this pressure is going to be above your operating pressures so that it's not sitting there tripping all the time. But uh, if something happens and your compressor continues to run and you're and it's building pressure and you want to protect your components, you have the safety valve that once the pressure reaches a certain level, it's going to shift the spool and allow the uh, built up pressure to be exhausted to atmosphere to protect your uh, equipment. Uh, you have uh, relief valves and this is can be used much like a safety valve. So you set this one's adjustable so you can set a maximum uh, system pressure using uh, something like this to if it your system something fails and you start building excess pressure this is you can set a maximum pressure with this to uh, if the pressure on your uh, line becomes too high you'll shift this against the spool you know, shift the spool against the spring and allow the air to be uh, exhausted to atmosphere and then your uh, regulator, which is used to set your system pressure. Uh, you'll notice that it uses a pilot port off of the uh, outlet port, which tells me that this is a pressure reducing valve like we saw in our hydraulic schematics. That uh, this is a normally open valve that once the pressure reaches uh, the set level, because this is adjustable, then it will shift your spool out of the path and uh, stop flow until the pressure comes back down and allows flow again. So just some different uh, types of pressure control that you would likely see in a, a pneumatic system. Uh, pneumatic actuators. So here we have uh, the same thing like what you have in a hydraulic system. We have double acting back cylinders, single acting cylinders, and this particular one has the internal spring to return the cylinder once pressure is relieved. Uh, this is your uh, rotational uh, rotating cylinder a rotary cylinder and notice the triangles are not uh, colored in telling me that this is a pneumatic symbol and then our rodless cylinder showing the piston on the inside with our uh, corresponding slide on the outside of the cylinder motors uh, much like hydraulic motors it's a circle with a triangle pointing in except this triangle is not it's just, it's just the outline of the triangle telling me that that is a pneumatic uh, motor uh, exhaust ports, or we've showed before on the DCV, we have our uh, line coming out to just an open triangle or uh, outline of a triangle. Tells me that's just a port exhausted to atmosphere. Uh, muffler is showing the line coming in, and this is going to muffle any kind of sound as it, with the air going back to atmosphere. Then finally, our pneumatic system uh, schematic again. And you can see that uh, we've covered everything on this uh, schematic except the filters, and we're going to discover, or we're going to cover um, air conditioning or conditioning your fluid uh, in another class. So we didn't spend a lot of time talking about filters. The main thing is that we want to see how uh, air is distributed or the fluid power is distributed to perform work at, uh, on different areas. So if you have any questions, uh, like always, please 
feel free to call me, send me an email, have to stop by my office, or post in the discussion board. Thank you.